Pedro, that was fantastic. I mean, to see a Montezuma quail, I've never seen that bird before. The interesting thing here is this bird only barely gets into North America. I mean, it's found here in Arizona and then a little over in New Mexico and West Texas. I guess that's about it, right? Right. But primarily, this is a Mexican species. Yeah, basically the, the Montezuma quail um, has, you know, about four or five subspecies. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that's present here is the Merns subspecies. But this is the hotspot for Montezuma quail, uh, yeah. southeast Arizona. Yeah. Because this bird's stealthy, he needs to hide, right? So he needs cover. One of the neat things that I've found about this bird here, that in the past, uh, researchers have examined this bird, its range and its movements, basically in oak woodlands and meadows in those areas. But in here, it tends to occupy also the sacatone. Right, the sacatone is this big, tall grass that's basically all out around us throughout this, this little floodplain. Right, it's something that wildlife really depend upon even um, in the midst of fire, um, this is one species that recovers real quickly. Yeah, the sacatone comes back real quickly. And then since it's bottom land, it also affords opportunity for ephemeral ponds and water sources that species can make use of, especially in harsh times. So how important is Mexico then for this bird's future? Well, Mexico, I think, serves as a genetic reservoir. In the past, this bird survived the drought and grazing and hunting in the late 1800s and the early 1900s because either they had a safe haven in Mexico or they retreated to the sky islands that are known right. here in the Sonoran. It's not quite known how these birds repopulated since, since then, you know, when they were thought to have gone extinct. Yeah. What do you think the impact of the border fence issue? Do you have any idea about that on Montezuma quail? I think wildlife uh, see barriers as obstructions and they definitely don't recognize political boundaries. So I think wildlife that would normally cross through like leopards or mountain lions, the fence or the wall probably inhibits their movement to a great extent. Uh, the Montezuma quail, they don't normally migrate through, but I think it's an impediment to genetic diversity. That's something that I hope to examine in the future. I've collected feathers from all the birds I've trapped to examine, um, you know, the genetic diversity, uh, both at, you know, a small scale as well as a landscape scale. Right. Yeah. So, and see where these birds came from. Well, I'll keep looking. But, uh, we saw a Montezuma quail. Very awesome. <laughs> Thank you.